The next couple of weeks passed relatively quick, and as Halloween was fast approaching, so too were the outrageous decorations and propaganda. All over, haunted houses were popping up and tales of ghost stories filled the streets. There hadn't been much word from the paranormal community, although there were a few disappearances in the area. Having been reunited with Leah and her mentor, Rain felt overwhelmed by the changes. They had moved locations, renting out a spacious apartment in the middle of town. She and Leah could still see each other, considering they were enrolled in a new private school. Both despised it, having to wear uniforms and abide by strict rules. With the knowledge Halloween was well on its way, Leah was too excited to care, distracted by the thought of dressing up while Rain was more concerned with the news. There wasn't much to be said. The two young men who had disappeared both yielded from sketchy backgrounds, so people generally assumed they had met their end in a similar fashion. There was, however, one report that caught people quite odd. The local pet store had experienced a recent vandalism in which all of the rodents, including 16 rabbits, 12 rats, and a handful of guinea pigs, had been stolen. What was even stranger was the fact that it was all done without anyone's knowledge. I bet it was someone from PETA, Leah said from the back seat of their private car. Who's PETA? Ren frowned. It's better you don't know. The school was an old building that looked quite foreboding around Halloween. Made of gray stone, it almost resembled a prison. Private school, Leah thought glumly, was comparable. Fiddling with her uniform, the collar irritated her immensely, and she grabbed her bag as she started up the stairs. We have time to get food, right? Rain hadn't packed a lunch, and the school food made her nauseous. You have twenty minutes. I'll be back in plenty. Not far down the block, a strip mall played host to a familiar guest. Dressed in a red and black pinstripe suit, a dark-haired young man brandishing a large plastic bag stormed into a local Petco. Making his way to the counter, he reached into the bag and emerged with an enormous green nylon bone that looked as if it had been chewed to bits. Pushing his way to the register, he slammed it down in front of the cashier and demanded a refund. You said this thing was under warranty, he raged. Yeah, against dogs. What did you put that through, a meat grinder? Don't get cute with me, you little shit. I paid 20 bucks for the biggest fucking one you people had. Now either you give me my money back or I'm gonna put what's left of this bone right through your skull. Picking up the disaster that was once the dog toy, he shoved it in the associate's face. Whoa, dude, chill out. Get you your money back, but do you mind telling me what kind of dog did that? No breed you've ever heard of. Handing him back the 20, the boy at the register stared uneasily. Give me that, Vance hissed, snatching it from his hand. I want another one. No, as a matter of fact, I want three, just for the hassle. You're gonna have to take that up with the manager. Oh, really? How about I just take it up with you? I'm not at liberty to- Save it. Storming from the store, he grabbed the tattered bone in an even worse mood than he had been in before. Rain was scarcely expecting someone to come tearing out of the mall like a raging bull. The Nyla bone went flying as the back of Vance's suit was demolished by the front of her cream cheese bagel. Oh, you gotta be fucking ca- Looking up to see Rain, his jaw dropped. No, it's not possible. Please, tell me my life doesn't suck this bad. Nearly choking on her food, she looked as if she'd seen a ghost. What are you doing here? You know, I was just wondering that very same question. What's this? He nodded toward the getup she was wearing. You decide to lose the goth chick look and go for prep? Please tell me you're not attending high school again. Surprised he was being friendly or at least mild-mannered, Rain gave him a look. I'm in private school now, she answered while she tore apart another piece of her snack. The nuns aren't thrilled with the goth look, so I'm stuck with this. Nuns? Vance choked back a laugh. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You? You're going to a school with nuns? It's a private school, she flushed. I needed holy guidance. Vance had never laughed so hard. Holy guidance? Are you kidding me? Rain, I'm sorry, but no amount of holy guidance is going to make an ounce of difference. It wasn't my idea, she said glumly. Well, that made my day. Holy guidance, please. Actually, it might be a good thing I did run into you, he admitted. Or maybe the other way around? But regardless, you don't know where I can find something that won't disintegrate if it's, say, chewed? Reaching into the bag, he pulled out the nylon bone, which had to have been at least four inches thick. A bone? I don't know, I've never had a dog. Rain studied the marks. This isn't from a canine. Vance, what did you get? Uh, well, actually, it's not so much what I got, he scratched the back of his neck, but what I took. What did you take? Don't tell me you adopted a werewolf cub or something. Uh, look, why don't you just tell me where I can find chew-proof stuff for, say, a shark? You don't give chew toys to sharks, Vance, unless they're baby seals. What did you get? Vance suddenly pulled up his sleeve to examine a large golden Rolex. I told you, I didn't get anything. I stole it.
No, if you're not going to help, you can go back to your church. I'm kind of on the clock here. Ren could not have cared less if she was late. Forget the clock. What gives? Just go back to where you came from, okay? I... Oh, shit. He groaned as his watch began to beep. I gotta go. Bolting into a nearby neighborhood currently under renovation, Vance cared little for whether or not he was followed. Yanking open the door of an unoccupied house, he rushed up the steps toward the first room at the top of the flight. The interior was fully furnished, with a bed, several shelves, and a dresser, all of which were covered in knick-knacks and bizarre-looking objects, including a glowing red sphere inside a tiny jar and a silver skull made of glass. The real prize, however, was not an artifact, but a small child that sat on the floor. Dressed in a black-and-white suit, he bore a striking resemblance to Vance. His hair was purposefully gelled in mimicry, and although there was a vast difference in age between them, the only physical one were the boy's eyes, which happened to be a bright silver instead of gold. Looking up as he appeared, the child beamed and continued to strangle a familiar black cat. Sorry, Rose, I got held up. Slipping through the front, Rain ghosted up the stairs. Originally, she'd meant to be discreet, but upon seeing the child, she stopped. Vance, what the hell did you do? Gritting his teeth, he went for the door and tried to force her out of the room. What the hell are you doing here? He hissed. Get out! What do you mean, what am I doing here? I've lived here for weeks. You're the one who just showed up. Why'd you follow me? And whose kid is that? Are you crazy? You better not eat him, Vance. I swear to God, I will end you. Eat him? Why would I eat him? He's my brother. You kidnapped your brother? She asked in outrage. You can't even take care of yourself. How are you going to take care of someone who can't even talk? You think I was just going to leave him there? He barked. Why? So he could wind up like me? I can take care of him just fine. The only reason I had trouble in the past was, hmm, let me think, because of you and your stupid friends. You can't take care of him, Vance. And as for me and my stupid friends, we set you free. I don't know why you helped us if you hate us so much. Opening his mouth to say something, he was cut short by the piercing sound of a loud eep from the other room. Hold that thought. Tearing open the door, he drew a sharp breath as the little boy sunk a gamut of needle-like teeth into the side of Rose. Vincent, no! God damn it, she's not a chew toy! Racing over, he pulled him off the dark mite who squealed angrily before running from the room. Ren stepped inside despite Vance's objection. Staring at the child, she felt a sudden sadness. No human would ever be able to hold him. Her own mother couldn't even look at her when she'd bared her fangs. His name is Vincent? she asked. What's with the V's? I don't know. Ask my father. Vance knelt beside the boy who crawled toward her. Careful. He bites. I don't know why you gelled his hair. He looks like a mini you. That's kind of why I did it, he muttered and handed her the demolished chew toy. Here, so you don't have to explain to the hospital why you lost a hand. Holding Vincent, she gently pat his back. He's just teething. It's normal for kids to bite. I did too when I was his age. Yeah, well, I didn't. It's normal for rodents to bite. But this kid? I'm running out of chew toys. Look at that thing. He did that in an hour. Baby's teeth. It's normal. Vincent picked at Rain's sleeve and began to laugh as if it were somehow amusing. He never does that with me. He's cute, she smiled, exposing her own teeth despite having no idea what he found funny. The little boy appeared to register the similarity, and his smile broadened. Yeah, of course, he's not scared of you. Vance took a seat on the bed. Now, if only I could get him to realize I've got teeth, too. How the hell do you explain that to a two-year-old? <laughs> Good luck, teen dad. And I don't know, my dad encouraged biting. <laughs> my father whipped out the belt. I couldn't leave him there, Ryan. The things that man did. So you saved your brother. You've been on a roll lately, saving us and then him. What gives? Blame Sauron. Speaking of which, you're not going to tell anybody about this, are you? You know what'll happen if people find out about him? I'm not going to tell anyone. Rain didn't want any harm to come to a child. Thanks. Vance reached out to ruffle the boy's hair, and he lunged in an attempt to take a bite out of him. Bone! Leaning over, he picked it up and stuck it in his brother's mouth instead. Rain suddenly aimed a glance at her watch. Grimacing as she realized she was going to receive an earful from Leah, she held Vincent out to Vance. I have to show up at school where the nuns will break out the Bible. Oh, God forbid the Bible. I'm not a fan. See you later, Vinny. Yeah, much later. Come on, you, Vance said to the boy. I didn't go through all that trouble last night so you could skip breakfast. It was no surprise what had become of the animals stolen from the pet shop. Having constructed a makeshift pen out of cardboard and other scrap materials, Vance had dumped the rodents into it along with a bunch of litter and some lettuce he figured would keep them alive. Walking to the edge of the pen, he set Vincent down beside it. The boy seemed intrigued as his brother emerged with a small black and white pig, stroking it delicately in his hands. Chirping gleefully, as guinea pigs often do, the animal held no idea what was to become of it. All right, let's try this again, shall we? I don't know what method Dad used, but I prefer the hands-on approach. You're gonna have to learn sometime, so it might as well be now. Holding out the pig, Vance presented him with the animal and watched to see what the boy would do. When he did nothing, Vance sighed. 
I guess maybe you need some help? Let me think. Pursing his lips, an idea occurred to him, and he reached into his pocket to pull out the destroyed remains of the Nyla bone. Okay, Vinny, open up. That did the trick. Dropping the guinea pig, Vincent went for the bone. However, instead of giving it to him, Vance picked up the pig instead. The reaction was instantaneous. Zoning in on the animal, the little boy's eyes began to give off a bright illuminescence. Peeling up the sides of his face, he revealed rows of dagger-like teeth. Instead of Vance's slanted needle points, Vincent's were more triangular, serrated, and designed for tearing flesh, which was exactly what happened as he leaned forward and closed his jaws around the top half of the animal. Vance was left holding the backside of a dead guinea pig while the other half vanished down his brother's throat. Arching a brow, he pulled the remains away and stared at the child, who began to crawl toward the bone as if nothing had ever happened. Teething's a phase, huh? That's the third one of these I've had to clean up. What do you have to say for yourself, Tiny? Vincent wasn't paying attention. Come on, you, we're going for a walk. Hoisting him onto his shoulder, the boy clung to him as he made his way downstairs and called for Rose to get the leash. A few minutes later, the three of them were on their way to a small child's playground. Bright pink leash in hand, Vance held onto Rose, who scrambled forward in an attempt to sniff at everything, which was frankly bizarre, considering she was a cat. In the other hand, he held the leash of a skull pattern baby harness that he was currently pulling Vincent with. Reaching the park a few minutes later, he tied Rose to a bench and walked up to a child's swing. My god, what the hell was he feeding you? You weigh almost as much as I do. Vance poked his brother's stomach and Vincent looked up with a smile. Don't give me that. Unstrapping the harness, he plopped him down and gave him a push. From now on, it's two mice a day, Vinny boy. Either that or you're gonna have to learn to crawl up and down those stairs on your own. Giggling happily as Vance launched him into the air, Vincent clapped his hands together and smiled. Leaving him to his own devices, his brother went to take a seat beside Rose, who was nibbling happily at a piece of grass. With a snap of his fingers, he summoned a small black book harboring an odd Latin inscription, crossed one leg over the other, and began to read while the swing kept Vincent occupied. School let out not long after, and Rain left with Leah. I'm not taking the car today. I'll walk home. Okay, but tell Jenny I'm coming over tomorrow for food. With a slight nod, Rain headed in a different direction. She figured she would study at the park in order to keep from attracting the attention of her mentor, who would know something was on her mind. Crutting across the grounds, the vampire stopped at the sight of Vincent. Vance had lost track of time while the swing had continued to rock back and forth behind him. Evidently, the poor boy was no longer quite so happy and began to exhibit a greenish complexion as he hung limply over the edge. Are you not paying attention to him? Rain stormed up to Vance and pinched his shoulder. Ow! Whirling around, he went to smack her with the book, though stopped when he realized who she was. I thought you were a Jesus camp. I'm done with school, you ass. Go tend to him. Vance's eyes slid toward Vincent, who was still staring at the grass as the swing finally slowed and he spewed forth the remains of a partially digested guinea pig. Ugh, that's what you get for eating that thing, Vance sighed while Vincent's eyes filled with tears. Whoa, hey, stop that. Putting him down, he tried to straighten his back. You gotta cut down on the chow, kid. I'm gonna collapse if I have to keep picking you up. Vincent just continued to stare. Don't look at me like that. What, you want Rose? Go play with Rose. He pointed at the dark mite who quickly attempted to scurry away. Vincent, however, only stood there wailing. You're ridiculous. Wren set her bag down and picked up the boy herself. Clinging to her, he dug his nails into her shoulder. What have you been feeding him? Uh, guinea pigs. Or rather, half guinea pigs. It's okay, Vinny. She rubbed his back. Of course he's gonna throw up. I didn't think he was gonna bite it in half. That's the third one this week he slaughtered like that. I don't know what to do with all this chewing. I never had these kinds of issues as a kid, and I sure as hell didn't tear small animals down the middle. Did you try normal toddler food? Vance rolled his eyes. I think you're missing the point here. He's my brother, hence he doesn't consume normal toddler food. And what he does consume does not involve butchering the damn animal in the process. This better be one of those phase things. You shouldn't let him swing after he just ate. He doesn't watch much TV, does he, Vin? You should just stay with me, she told the boy. I'd dress you better. Hey, he's my brother. Besides, you don't know how to take care of him, and I have no interest in sharing my biology with anyone, least of all you. Vance crossed his arms while Vincent wrapped his own around Rain's neck. Her eyes steadily watered as she caught whiff of a smell. When's the last time you changed his diaper? Changed his diaper? What do you mean? I thought he came with one. He needs another one. Another one? Why would he need another one? If he smells, just give him one of these. Reaching into his pocket, Vance pulled out a small tree-shaped air freshener and proceeded to tuck it down the back of the boy's pants. That's what I've been doing. Rain's eyes flared red. You have to change his diaper, you idiot! An air freshener? Are you retarded? What? It's an air freshener. It says it's supposed to kill Otis right on the package. I figured that's what it was used for anyway. The moment I set him down, I'm gonna kick your butt. Rain tried to curb her cursing. We have to change his diaper. We? What we? If you want to change a poop sheet, be my guest. 
He's your brother, isn't he? You just told me I wasn't allowed to interfere. Yeah, of course he is, but that doesn't mean I'm touching that thing on his ass. Besides, I still got a shitload of these pine tree things from Rorik's house. He's gonna get a diaper rash, and he's gonna be upset. You're changing his diaper. Um, how about I'm taking my brother home, and you're gonna go back to wherever it is you came from? Vance, you need to change his diaper. I'm not touching it. Vance stormed back to the bench where Rose was still tied and removed the leash from the handle. Watching him do so, Vincent looked mildly distracted and tried to grab a hold of her. Hey, come on, Vinny, don't strangle her, all right? Vance, change his diaper. Paying rain no mind, he left the park and returned to the house. Vincent was brought upstairs and Vance observed him before his eyes began to drift. Coming to rest on the jar with the bright red orb, a thought occurred to him and he got up. Hey, Vincent, stay here for a second. When he returned, he was carrying a small white mouse. Setting the animal on the desk, he reached for the jar, and the moment Vincent's eyes met with it, or rather the strange floating orb inside, the teeth came out and he began to gnaw at the lid. Okay, normal. Removing the jar, Vance set it back down and instead reached for the mouse. Picking it up by the tail, he dangled it out to him. Now, specimen number two. Had he not jerked back as quick as he did, he might have lost his hand. Bounding upward, Vincent took one look at the animal, and with a swift snap, it was gone. Vance staggered backwards, eyes growing wide. That's not good. Don't move, any. Five minutes later, he returned with a microwavable pillow, much like the one Soren had used on him during the course of their previous escapade. Come here, Ven. It's time for a little nap, okay? Just relax. This isn't gonna hurt. As he placed the compress against his abdomen, Vincent fell over like a limp sack. The presence of heat had put him into a coma so fast it was frightening. Worried about the possible repercussions, Vance pulled back his gums to get a better look at the boy's teeth. He immediately noticed the difference in size, shape, and appearance and swallowed hard. Oh, Dad, what did you do? Running a hand through his hair, he removed the hot pad and started downstairs. It was twenty minutes later that he finally relented. Rose! Crawling out of the sofa with a yawn, the dark might looked up. I need your help. She gave an eep, and not long after that, a loud knock was heard on Rain's door.